This is Neela Devaney, who is the wizard behind the mural behind the Art Street Meeting House. And she'll be telling us how we got the mural and the students who did it and all the process they're in. Neela, it's yours. <laughs> Excellent. <clears throat> yes, so my name is Neela and I am a Philadelphia-based artist. I have been working with the mural company Amber Art and Design for about a little under four years now. Um, and Amber Art and Design is a community-based um, public art company here in Philly. And um, we, yeah, I was able to be the project lead here. Um, it was my first time being a project lead. So it was actually a really exciting and emotional <laughs> and um, profound experience for me as well. We had a really good team on the project. Um, and yeah, today I will just tell you a little bit about why this project was important and, you know, where it even came from, what the spark of it was. It actually has a really interesting origin. Um, and I'll tell you a little bit about who was involved. So I'm going to share my screen here. And. I need to go to present. Okay, so I titled um, the mural in the palm of your hand. And um, that has a lot to do with this very specific moment in the mural where there is a seed growing out of somebody's hands. So someone's holding their hands out like this. And then from their hand is a sprout. And the theme of the mural ended up being a lot about intergenerational growth and about like things growing um, new from old places. So the concept of a sprout felt really important. So that's sort of where the title came from. It's behind the Art Street Meeting House. Um, for anyone who's, I, I'm assuming everyone's very familiar, <laughs> but Art Street Meeting House is obviously, you know, um, an inc incredibly sacred site. And um, it's a very ancient place. And I was working with um, Sean, who works for the Art Street Meeting House. And he was working on, um, he was working with grant money he had received to be doing work around social justice within the Art Street community and generally within like Quaker community. And they were doing, you know, he was working on several different projects at the time, but he had the idea of creating a mural on the on the back of this shipping container that's behind the meeting house. And it may just be a shipping container, but you can see it from all the windows of the meeting house. And, you know, there was no way we were ever going to actually paint on the building, obviously, because <laughs> it's extremely historic. So it was like, how can we create something new that's on this land and on the sacred site, but that doesn't actually, you know, affect or damage the building at all. Um, so this here is the shipping container we were working with. Um, and it's, it's pretty long. Um, it's pretty big. And um, it's right in the parking lot. And the thing about the other side of the shipping container is that there's a little pathway there that links to, I guess, is it, it might be Ben Franklin's house maybe or it links to to other sort of like ancient property over there where they have been trying to restore that pathway and they thought having an image there to sort of link art street to like the rest of our old city would also be sort of meaningful so those are some of the things that we were working with and um this is the mural so this is this is a final product image um the I'll, I'll go through, you know, what the process was around this, but I'll tell you that the spark was essentially that they were interested, they had received some grant money and were interested in doing work around um, protests that happened during the summer of 2020, talking and considering and reflecting on police brutality, on community resources, on ways in which the city of Philadelphia had failed its community, had s served its community. Like they were sort of asking all these really, 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 really big questions and thinking a lot about like, what is, a, you know, how can Arch Street Meeting House as a community hub 
utilize that to have these conversations, basically. And so what happened was that initially we were going to have, um, we were going to have these like conversations that were going to be really citywide um, that would launch into like thinking about like legacy of Philadelphia, legacy of Arch Street. And we ended up after some time of sort of like starting, you know, with a really big net um, sort of consolidating our idea into working with youth. And we decided to work with the Frankfurt Friends School. Um, and we decided to work with um, eighth graders there. And we thought that that was sort of a pivotal, I mean, eighth grade is just a very pivotal moment because you have people who are graduating and leaving a version of youth and entering into sort of another version of youth, but like thinking about legacy in a different way. And so we were like, okay, let's harness this demographic of youth and talk about these really big questions and sort of open up and see what collaboration could be there and what images could come up with it, could come out of that. Um, yes, yeah, so that, here are some close-ups of the mural. Um, the mural is people gathering. It's people gathering together. Um, it's supposed to feel like everyone is very familiar. So like, even if you do not recognize the faces that are here, that they symbolize um, something warm and familiar to you. And the idea and the concept here is that the people who are really like dark, like bright pigment um, people here in the front um, are is sort of like a contemporary gathering. And then these ghostly figures who you might see in the back, like there's one hidden behind the tree here and there's some ghostly figures over here you'll see those are all quaker revolutionaries and they are specific people and we wanted to honor them as being the backdrop for you know contemporary gathering if that makes sense so it was really about like the whole mural was really about like okay we've got eighth graders we've got 13 year olds we have youth and we're bringing that bright youthful energy to like one of the oldest most spiritual sites <laughs> in Philadelphia like what's gonna happen <laughs> what does that look like and how what is that intersection you know between um a really ancient place that is really rooted in tradition and legacy and what does it mean to revitalize that as well so we started, so, so here's, yeah, here's a small statement about it. I said, this mural symbolizes the garden of intergenerational healing, both individually and as a community. With the guidance of ancestral revolutionary figures, this mural is both a prayer and a gesture of gratitude for our human ability to inspire one another in our cycles of growth. Um, so just a little bit of background, Amber Art and Design is the mural company that created this. They were originally reached out to because these are my mentors, Kira and Linda, who I work for there. This is Linda Fernandez and Kira Johnston. And Kira Johnston in the blue has um, Quaker family and has a relationship to the Quaker community, which is how um, he was initially reached out to. And he ended up, you know, he, he collaborated with me on this project and guided me through it and also ended up sort of passing the baton off to me in, in terms of the leadership. Um, but he is, he's the original link to, to the Quaker community and why he was reached out to. These are just some examples of some, some of Amber Art and Design's work. Um, they do really beautiful, thoughtful projects in Philadelphia. Amber Art and Design's mission is really centered around working with community the entire process. So it's slow processes, it's thoughtful, it's really getting to know people and a community need and, you know, taking taking time to really be present in every step of the process. Um, so they have done all kinds of murals throughout Philadelphia. These are just some examples. Um, and then these are some examples of my painting work. So I do people gathering. I'm really interested in like um, public spaces. So like, for example, this here is a bus stop. 
Um, I'm really interested in people gathering sort of accidentally, like a bus stop, you know, like sort of unintentional gathering is really beautiful and interesting to me and feels like a really big part of living in Philadelphia. So a lot of my paintings are just people like people holding each other, intimacy happening in public spaces, um, community gathering. And I'm specifically interested in the concept of celebration and how celebration can be really complicated. And celebration oftentimes involves a lot of grief. Celebration oftentimes involves a lot of mourning. Celebration oftentimes involves sadness and other complexities. So I like to create nuanced celebration images. And I think that that's why Kier thought that I would be a good fit for this project was because we were really thinking about celebration. Like what does it mean to consider Philadelphia as a city and like ways in which Philadelphia needs improvement, ways in which Philadelphia has, we want to honor what has been happening. Like, you know, just all of it at once. So yes, this project was a collaboration between Amber Art and Design, Frank for Friends School and Art Street Meeting House. Um, these were the questions that were sort of guiding the process. Looking back at our collective past, what can we learn from our successes and our failures as a city and as a community? How do we heal collectively? What are the obstacles towards greater community care? Can art be used as a communal tool for exploration in these kinds of conversations? Specifically, why murals and why public art? And what legacy do we want to leave? So these are really the central guiding questions. And what happened was that the first step of this process was that Sean from Art Street Meeting House came to Frankfurt Friends School and gave a presentation on sort of the history of Quakerism. Um, a lot of these kids, you know, because they went to a Quaker school, obviously knew a lot, but his approach was really graceful because, and I really admired it and learned a lot from it as well, because he um, talked to these kids about he, he talked to the kids about, he held Quakerism accountable for parts of Quaker history that is racist, for people in Quaker history that are racist, for people in Quaker history that have been sexist, for parts of Quaker history that are important to acknowledge caused harm. Equally, he talked about parts in Quaker history that were healing that were revolutionary that um changed the world that changed philadelphia um the love the the extremely loving parts of quakerism and he just sort of opened it up and painted a really authentic portrait and the kids really engaged with it and really responded and like learned a lot from that and it was just a perfect um set up to these questions that we're asking which is just sort of like okay realistically as a community as a city like how can we grow how do we heal what do we want you know what's our legacy um so he started off with that with that and then next i i led the kids um in all kinds of art exercises and we this is one specifically where we just started we were practicing collaborating and drawing so we just had a bunch of pieces of paper out on the ground and everyone collaborated on like jumped around and made uh, added to everyone's drawing so this is an example this has like you know a bunch of different people in it <laughs> but people were just having fun adding like practicing collaboration basically and thinking about these things and we had really interesting conversations about like heroes and like Sean was Sean, the, the sort of um, crux of Sean's education was like, what does it mean to glorify people? When is it good to glorify people? When can it be problematic to glorify someone? Like, what does it mean to really pedestalize someone? And so we just really talked about that. And these eighth graders are brilliant. They were amazing. I learned a lot from them. They had a lot of really interesting things to say. And we asked this question of like, who do we want to honor? Who, who is worth being honored? And like, what does that mean? And one of the really interesting things that came out of it was that we started talking about murals and we started, and the, the people who, you know, they, the kids have grown up in Philly. So they see murals all the time. And they were saying that the murals that feel the most meaningful is when they see regular familiar faces up on a wall. 
And we talked about that. Like when you're putting someone's face up on the wall, you're immortalizing them. And so it's important to be careful. Just before I started this talk, we were having a conversation about a mural that happened um, in a neighborhood that the neighborhood didn't want. And it's actually really important to think about that, that when you put up a mural, you're taking up a lot of space. And so to be really careful with who you are elevating and how you are elevating. And it was really amazing to have this conversation with them because we were just able to really talk about the power of art in that way. And you know, why it's important to consider these questions. So we were talking about, okay, so who would we want to honor? And people just had really sweet answers. It was a lot of family. It was a lot of friends. It was like familiar faces at the grocery store. It was like um, a neighbor down the street who has the dog they like. Like these are the people who they thought of when they thought of community heroes. And these are just some pictures of like, you know, some of them are silly, some of them are serious, but like some of the things the kids came up with when they were thinking about community heroes. And it was really amazing. We also wrote down, like they wrote stories um, about community heroes and like times when they felt like they experienced a community hero doing something. And that was really amazing too, because it was across the board, always not someone famous, <laughs> you know, it was like a familiar local face. And that was their definition of community heroes. So that was pretty incredible. Um, so yeah, we were, we were, we were coming up with these ideas. We were practicing drawing, um, and we were like, okay, so moving forward, you know, what's our legacy? In other words, what's our mural? What do we want to symbolize? Um, so these were some of the themes that came up through a lot of conversation. And this, this is all fully from the eighth graders. Like these themes are fully from them. So we had legacy, theme of time, new beginnings, forgiveness, Jimmy Neutron, because <laughs> they are eighth graders, um, warm color, ostriches, flowers and plants, community and trees. So they were just thinking about, you know, beautiful images immediately. And it was cool. So that was how we ended the first session. And I came back um, another time and we said, okay, let's take um, these themes and we made a mind map um, from the themes. So basically what we did was we took the themes and then we expanded them, you know, and we, we got bigger and we were thinking about legacy. And what's cool about this is that it was so inspiring. <laughs> yeah, they came up with all kinds of things. So you know, the things here that are highlighted in yellow were the things that we ended up deciding we really wanted to move forward with. So the strongest idea is like when we were thinking about community, the random people, like what that means is like the same thing I was talking about before, like local faces, local figures, um, familiar faces, people that they recognize, people who work at the pharmacy, people who drive their bus, those sort of faces being really elevated. Um, so they came up with the idea of seeds and continuing life that I was talking about at the beginning of this presentation. Um, they liked the idea of elders and children sharing the same image. They were thinking about like seeds and also huge trees that are in bloom, um, flowers sprouting, people coming together. So really just like this duality of like birth and elders and birth, like what is young and what is ancient. So that really all came from them. Um, so then I came back with them and these are just some murals that I was showing them for inspiration. So I said, okay, well, we talked about legacy. Here's some murals that talk about legacy. Here's some murals that talk about forgiveness. Here's some imagery of plants. This was the color scheme that they had said they wanted. Um, so I showed them murals as inspiration. And after that, we took the theme. So then the eighth graders, this was in the spring of last year, 2022. And then in the fall of 2022 with, no, 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 this was still in the... <laughs> getting, it was two sets of eighth graders. So then the same eighth graders in the summer of 2022 helped to create this design. Um, so we took those themes that we had created and they started drawing. So these people were working on legacy. These people were working on themes of forgiveness. 
we had the concept of roots and trees growing and we just sort of divided them up into groups and everybody was working on their own idea. We had sun and light was a big thing that came up. And then we took all of our ideas and we started to put them. This is at this this took place at the Art Street Meeting House. I don't know if you all have ever been there, but this is in one of their meeting rooms there. So they got to come to the site and see it. We took all of their ideas and we started to compile them into a sort of design. <laughs> and so this was like, you know, an initial sketch. Obviously, the mural looks nothing like this. But what's cool is that actually a lot of the themes that were created are totally here in this initial collaborative design. The sun, you know, right there in the center, the roots, the roots here, there were roots across the entire mural, the flowers, the trees, the people gathering. Um, it was a pretty amazing first sketch. And we talked about it and we talked about, you know, what they thought about it and what it meant. Um, and then these eighth graders actually graduated. So this was sort of their part of the process was that they helped with the design and then they graduated from eighth grade. So, so then I, over the summer, took their design. So I took this and then I also talked to Sean and Sean said, okay, these are great starts to a mural design. We really want to make sure that Quaker revolutionary figures are honored here. So I took this and then I took Quaker revolutionaries and started to fold them together to make a design. So I'll tell you a little about the people who are featured in the mural, who are Quaker. Um, the first person is Baird Weston. Um, he um, was a civil rights activist during the middle of the 20th century. Um, he did a lot of really amazing things, but one of his most notable is that he was a really major person in planning the March on Washington for Jobs and Freedoms in 1963. Um, and he talked a lot and was very open about how Quaker faith and his family from his grandmother's side really influenced him, um, specifically themes of like community and equality and peace and how they really gracefully intersected with activism, like Quakerism and activism being really hand in hand. The other person that we have here is Benjamin Lay, who's from quite a bit before. Bayard Rustin was definitely the most contemporary. Everyone else was much earlier. Um, but he was English and he settled in Philadelphia and he is known for his really, really dramatic um, anti-enslavement protests. And he was he was a he was a really important abolitionist at the time. Um, he was really radical in a lot of ways, too, um, outside of abolitionism as well. He had a lot of really interesting practices um, and he lived in a cave by the Schuylkill River, I believe, right? think so <laughs> um lucretia mott of course we wanted to feature um she was such an important person in abolition as well as voting rights and um, women's rights as well so we wanted to include her and then angelica and sarah grimke as well um who similarly were really important advocates and the first nationally known white American advocates for women's right and abolition of enslavement. Um, and then Sarah Maps Douglas, who felt like one of the most important to people to me to honor because she, her family was Quaker and she was Quaker, but a big part of her life was um, advocating for anti-racism within the Quaker community. So for her entire I think her entire definitely her mother's entire life and for a good portion if not entirety of hers she talked about how um Quaker meeting was segregated so in the Art Street meeting house um only white people were allowed in the front hall and she would talk a lot about how hypocritical that was and why it was so problematic for an organization that preached about um peace and equality to not practice it and she just did a lot of work in that way and she has a lot of really interesting letters that are documented where she is like holding Quaker and Arch Street Meeting House specifically accountable and her and her mother were yeah they were very devout and I believe that they went every Sunday to meeting um and I have this picture here because part of the reason it felt important to honor her was because she is she was a painter 
and she's she has a lot of like documentation of her paintings and she does really beautiful flowers and so it felt cool to honor her through painting flowers in this mural as well so I took the kids design and I took all of the people that Sean wanted me to honor and I created this design I actually did it the old-fashioned way I painted it <laughs> I didn't use photoshop or um and so it meant just hand painting it with watercolor and I sort of cut out a piece of paper that was about the same size as the shipping container and um yeah I I created a little design so I was like okay how can I honor the people who um, these important ancestral guiding lights, these Quaker revolutionaries, and surround them in youth and the the new generation. And like, how can we think about that being like a collaboration, a connection between the young and the old? And this little piece at the top here was that Sean had also asked if we could paint the other side of the shipping container with sunset so that you could see it walking from the other direction. So these are just some close-ups. This, these two are the Grimke sisters. There's Baird Weston up there. Oh, these pictures don't show very well. But there's Sarah Maps Douglas, and there's Lucretia Mott and Benjamin Lay behind her. And then this is a photoshopped image. This is my hand-painted design on the wall. So this was like, okay, this is what it's gonna look like. So then we just started painting. So this is my assistant, Kate. We had a really amazing group of assistants on this project and we painted on these large pieces, these large boards, which we then um, attached to the building, the um, maintenance and landscapers and build like groundskeepers of Art Street Meeting House are really, really wonderful people. They helped this entire time. And um, they helped with building a frame, a wooden frame, to put around the edge of the shipping container so that we could attach these boards to it. So here we have the beginning process. We started with the sunset, and then we started to fill everything in. These are just some pictures from the painting. It was really fun. I mean, we did it pretty quickly. Um, I really like very vibrant colors and we really wanted to honor like, oh, and another um, source of inspiration for this mural was that the famous painting Peaceable Kingdom and like, which is a famous Quaker painting that has, you know, it's like a very, it's a very elaborate kingdom portrait <laughs> with animals and like so many different types of life in it. And so that I was thinking about that lushness in this and how to kind of depict like the wildness and the lushness that is a part of the Quaker belief, you know, peace and about um, harmony. So here we are. This is when it started to come together. And so we painted all of these in Amber Art Studio. It's in North Philly. So this was this was us getting started and we were painting it all together um, some, yeah, these trees, the kids came up with the concept of a willow tree. And also, um, I included the pen treaty elm sort of symbolically. Um, I'll show you. Uh, I included these dogwood flowers as well. These pink dogwood flowers because they're Philadelphia native. And I thought that was important. And I also included a lot of marigolds, um, because marigolds in so many cultures represent grief and death and life at the same time. So I thought that those were really important. So then we brought in these panels to the new eighth grade class. So this was the fall now. This was October of this year. So October of 2022 or September of 2022. And they got to help paint. And that's what's so cool about painting them on painting on the panels is that you can bring them places. So we didn't have to disrupt their day, you know. Um, and they were wonderful, of course. We had so much fun. Um, they did a really, really good job. And yeah, we spent a couple of days painting with them. So it was really cool that the first eighth grade class helped with the design and the second eighth grade class helped with the creation. And like they were basically collaborating with each other without even realizing it. <laughs> um, yeah, so we went to their school. That's where these pictures are taken. And it was really lovely. 
And then they also came out, and this is the eighth grade class again, and they're painting on the other side of the container. So the other side of the container, rather than painting on boards, we just painted directly on the wall. And that's because it was a very simple sunset. So it felt more manageable. So the eighth graders helped with painting. Again, they did a beautiful job. It was cool for them to come out and see both sets of eighth graders, the class of 2022 and the class of 2021. Wait, class of 2022 and class of 2023. Um, both sets got hadn't like got to see Arch Street and have a tour of the facilities and learn about Arch Street Meeting House and learn about the history and the legacy of the space. So I think that was really cool, too, because they had heard about it in school, but hadn't had the opportunity to come and, you know, see it. And then we had a public community paint day. So these are pictures from our public community paint day. It was open to anyone to come and paint, which was also wonderful to have people out at Art Street Meeting House. And we filled in this whole sunset. There's Kier at the back. Um, but yeah, it was cool. It happened after meeting one day. So people came out and joined. And we filled in the, started filling in the sunset really quickly. So then we finished up the painting and we brought out the panels. And as you can see, there's like a wooden frame back there um, attached to the shipping container. And we attached it and this is what it became. <laughs> um, and it was really amazing. It was like, it felt like an extremely, um, it was sort of remarkably cohesive, the whole thing. Um, it was really amazing to have the eighth graders involved in every step of the way and to feel really like we collaborated in that way. It was really beautiful to like honor so many different parts of Quaker legacy and to honor so many parts of Philadelphia legacy and to just hear about all the different things that people saw and see in this mural when they look at it. Um, yeah, it was really exciting. So I will now just show you, because Lois mentioned it would be nice to know a little bit about what Amber Art and Design is working on now. So these are just some pictures of what Amber Art is doing now. They are working, we are working on a mural that is going up on 5th and Allegheny in North Philly on the side of a rec center called Man Rivera. And the project is about tile. And Linda who designed the mural was really interested in tile that's in Caribbean households. So she has Puerto Rican family and was thinking about like tile that's in bathrooms and that, and that's in kitchen and how a lot of the imagery and the tile itself um, goes, dates back to Spain and was, you know, brought there by colonization. And then from Spain dates back to um, Morocco. And so thinking about that like pathway of colonization and and like imagery and symbolism and family and all of that. And so she hosted these community um, days where people came out and helped think about symbols and like what their tile would be and what imagery they felt like represented them. So it's this really vibrant um, mural that has all these different that's sort of supposed to look like tiles, like painted tiles. And we've been working on that since November and it should go up um, pretty soon. I think we've got a couple more weeks of painting and then we're going to install it, um, which we do by gluing it literally to the wall, which is a really interesting technique that a lot of Philadelphia based mural artists use. Um, and this was a community paint day we had the other day. These were some kids helping so it's been really special and I really value working with them. And yes, I think that is the basics of my presentation. I would love to know if anyone had any questions or thoughts or if the mural made you think about anything at all. Um, where did you know. learn? Where did you learn this? I mean, where did yeah. you go to school? Where, oh. <laughs> where, where, where did this come from? This where did this come stuff. From? Yes. Um, so I, um, have always painted, like when I was little, I really loved it. I was lucky to have a public school art teacher who was good. Um, I studied it also in college. I went to Bennington College in Vermont and was able to study some painting there as well. But definitely most of my learning has come from mentors. 
So I was, I mentored with Presida Eyes Muralists and they're based in San Francisco. And then Amber Art and Design here in Philadelphia have really taught me everything I know about muralism. Yeah. Oh. Mm -hmm. Why did you come to Philadelphia? This. <laughs> yeah, this. I grew up in a small town in Northern California. And I think that I really was hungry for the bigness of the world. And I really wanted um to be in a place with a lot of people and a lot of energy and I had spent a little bit of time in Philadelphia and just had noticed that there was a lot of I just met a lot of really warm people a lot of really warm people and I think that I had witnessed some really amazing like mutual aid projects and community service projects and public art projects that made me feel like wow people are really collaborating there like people are working on things together there. And so I came <laughs> and I, I've done plenty of things here that are not related to art as well, just working in service and just sort of existing in the city. But um, in the past couple of years, I've been able to be more present in painting and in muralism. And that's been really special. So this is your full time job now? It is right now. Yes. That's great. Yeah. Yeah, I, I've been in Philadelphia 45 years. Uh -huh. During that time, um, the mural arts project started. And it's incredible how gorgeous it is. Mm -hmm. When I first came to Philadelphia 45 years ago, there was dirt, trash all over the streets. And people were feeling pretty miserable. And then suddenly, you know, people started painting walls. It just it's It's just gorgeous just to walk around and see all these beautiful murals and to have one at Arch Street is really fabulous you know? thank you so of course, much of course we do have a lot of walls around Arch Street um <laughs> I, I know it's historic and all but it would be nice to have some murals on the walls well it's so true and I will say that's what's so interesting about this project is that there are hardly any murals in Old City which you may have noticed there's yes. none. There's there's really and and the reason why is because first of all there's a lot of liability stuff around buildings in old city because they're old so it's actually really hard like it's I'm not even sure it it it's it's really hard it might not even be legal <laughs> because of like building codes like it's really hard to get a mural in old city um as an artist or as someone who wants a mural there. So that was part of why this felt really special um, because mm -hmm. there's suddenly a mural that's in that area. But yeah, it would be amazing because there are so many huge walls right there. Yeah. Wow. You, uh, you meant, uh, there was mention of the mural arts program. So this wasn't done under the mural arts program, but it, it will it be associated with the overall approach to murals that the that that organization supports so that it will be part of tours etc oh, that's, that's a nice thought it's actually not yeah the amber and design is an independent mural company all on their own so it isn't affiliated um but it would be so cool to put it on the map in some way so that people could come and take a look i know that i was talking to sean about also making postcards of it to have like at the front desk when you come into the artistry meeting house so people could like take one on their way out leaving from meeting <laughs> um so yeah it would be cool to figure out how to make it more accessible so amber arts doesn't actually get commissions from mural arts no, Amber Art is an entirely separate organization. They collaborate with Mural Arts. Yeah. Well, so who, collaborate. so who, who pays for it then? This mural, as far as I'm concerned, was paid from grant money that was specifically for Art Street Meeting House doing work that was about asking questions about community and youth and revitalization. Um, so I'm pretty sure that's where that comes from. But generally, every project has a different source. You know, a lot of times it's grants. A lot of times it's um, people with endowments. You know, sometimes it's fundraising. It can come from all kinds of different places. So what will you be doing next after this big project is finished, the one that you're doing at the moment? You know? 
Not sure. Not sure yet. Yes, there's Amber has a lot of really amazing projects coming up in Philadelphia, and I definitely will help on the ones that I'm able to. And um, also, yeah, I haven't really been working on my own individual painting process in the past year because I've been doing other mural projects, which is really amazing. Um, but it would be nice to spend some time developing my own painting language as well. So do you exhibit? Have you had? I have only had one exhibit, but it was amazing. I exhibited at um, Casa Mexico, which is a restaurant that is um, a part of South Philly Barbacoa in South Philly. Yeah. So I had some paintings there and that was special. Yeah. Well, we need more exhibits. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Thank you. What did, what did you say, Ray? Don't stop now. Yes, I appreciate the support. <laughs> yeah, I'm curious on what what you observed about the mural or what parts of it were, you know, resonated with any of you, if there was anything that caught your eye about it. I love the colors. Mm -hmm. I'm very interested always in colors more than anything. And um, it's just so cheerful. Yeah. When I mean, you look at it and you smile, you can't stop. I mean, it's just wonderful. I mean, it's, I mean, a parking lot is, it's pretty dreary, a parking, parking lot. So, um, yeah, I just, I just think it's absolutely lovely. Simple as that. <laughs> we need more. <laughs> yes. it's just so glad. Like, That's the point. We wanted to make people happy. What's interesting to me is you don't have any background in um, Quakers. I know. Well, that was what that I will say that that was a really amazing part of the experience was learning. Yeah, you did. You know, I was familiar. I have some friends who are, mm -hmm. and I was familiar. Um, but I, I don't know. I think that Kier thought I was a good fit because I, I think that I, I just care a lot about the values that um, Quaker faith promote. You know, I think that like, I care a lot about, I resonate with a lot of Quakerism and that was really special to get to learn about it through the eyes of all the people who are involved in this project and also to learn about Quakerism through the eyes of the revolutionaries that I was learning about. Um, and to just sort of like understand and create a picture and it felt really right to be sort of like, it felt like a thank you, you know, the, the whole mural felt a little bit like a thank you to also the people who taught me a lot about it mm -hmm. and to honor, honor the process of like sharing and learning in that way too. You learned pretty quickly. <laughs> yeah, I did my research. <laughs> It's um, it's 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 amazing, really. Thank, Thank you so, so much, much for for doing it and spending yeah. so, much your, so much of your life putting together this gorgeous piece of art for us. I mean, it's just fabulous. Yeah, well, it was my pleasure, and I'm so yeah, I'm so grateful to have been able to be a part of this. Mm. Mila, um, actually, I had another question. I I may have missed it, but um, in the palm of your hand. Is, was how was that title chosen? Oh, so it was chosen because one of the images in the mural is um hands that are going outward like this and holding a seed. And the whole uh, the eighth graders were the ones that came up with that idea about seeds. They wanted to have seeds and sprouts and then full grown trees and sharing the same image, sort of like we had these 13 year olds and then we had, you know, Lucretia Mott, like the concept of what is ancient and what is new and like sharing the same space. So that ended up being my favorite part of the mural was this one part where her hands are out and there's a sprout growing and like growing from her palms. So that was where that came from was just the idea of birth, you know, and things growing out of very old and ancient places. That's a very Christian concept too. That's true. I guess I haven't thought about that. Jesus holding us all in the palm of his hand. 
I think I think that's what it, it was. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That would make sense. Yeah. Interesting. So. I'm curious about the big yellow face. The big oh the sun. Oh, oh I it, it's got a face on it. I didn't know it was a sun. I thought it it might be a person. Yeah, yeah. I really love working with the moon and the sun in my paintings because I feel like it creates like the guardian angel, you know, like the the steady force that is observing so much change. So I really wanted to have a very steady, grounded feeling sun that sort of beamed out into the entire mural. Um, and so it's the, yeah, I was just thinking about sunlight and warmth and um, steadiness amongst all kinds of change. Yeah. <laughs> Well, thank you so much, everybody.